This is our 2003 to 2007 Dodge Ram Cummins Turbo Diesel Turbo Rebuild Kit. So this works on the common rail. This will also work on the HY35, which came out in 2001. Mainly what I did here is we have an O-ring for the bearing housing, but I machined my bearing housings for that O-ring. And I do have bearing housings that are already machined if you want to buy the bearing housing. Or you could also send us the bearing housing to be machined. This thrust bearing is one of the few thrust bearings that do not require an upgraded thrust bearing rebuild kit. So that is a unique piece about the whole sets is it's the only turbo out there that I can think of off the top of my head of all the turbos that we work on that does not need an upgraded rebuild kit because this collar is wide enough and this is wide enough on the back side to where it can withstand as much boost as you want to throw at it which at the most Cummins recommends 44 PSI. Some people run more than that. I don't recommend running more than what Cummins tells you to run with it. Our thrust bearing is a solid piece of copper bar that's machined down. What happens here is an end mill goes down and cuts out this little pocket. And then at the top of it, the holes are drilled out. And then these are then plugged up with these little ball things. With our thrust bearing, it has the larger oil ports which is an advantage so you don't have an issue with oil flow. Some of the cheaper kits have a powder bearing, so it's not machined out or drilled out, it's just a casted piece. Those usually have issues with the oil holes being too small, and often those will crack as a result of not getting enough oil. These drum bearings have the groove for the oil passages. Some have them like that and some don't. So you, it really doesn't matter which one you get as long as you have the correct journal bearings. The thrust collar and thrust spacer are the same as the HX35. We revised the oil drain gasket. The oil feed gasket, you actually don't need that. That's not part of this kit. My mistake. And the we added a V-band clamp option. So if you want this V-band clamp, you can buy it with, with this kit. But we also have a different kit that does not have this clamp. And that's if you don't need it or just don't want to spend the extra money on this clamp. So you have both options. I'll link to this kit below in the description box so you can purchase it if you want to buy this kit. Now I want to talk about this V-band clamp because this is so much better than the original. The shaft here is much bigger. I think it's like seven or eight millimeter. Here's an original. So you can see with the original one that the shaft size is much smaller for the bolt. These commonly break. So this is kind of a, it's, it's hard to find. And even if you can find one, they're really expensive. I remember calling the Cummins dealership trying to get this piece a long time ago. And they didn't have it, but they did have a V-band clamp, but they wanted $90 for it. So even if they did have that clamp, you know, it's just too expensive. It just makes more sense just to either buy another turbo or just buy a rebuild kit. So you can see the comparison in size. The style clamp that we have the bolt is probably about twice the size as the original this just helps prevent it from breaking most of the time when people break these it's either when they're removing it or they just tighten it down too much on the original ones they do have the torque spec written on the clamp i think it's like 74 inch pounds i'm going to give you guys a look at our bearing housings just to see how the o-ring works i cut a groove inside these bearing housings so that I could use this o-ring and this will seal up against the compressor housing. I did it here because you have this uh, dowel pin here and with that pin it also has a hole in the compressor housing so I realized that if I put the o-ring here then it's not going to seal past this point so I machined the bearing housing just so that o-ring will fit right in there and you could buy that bearing housing if you want to but this bearing housing is for the common rail 
it's not for the HY35. The difference in the HY35 one is that the step here is one millimeter shorter or taller. I can't remember. No, it's one millimeter shorter. And then this one's one millimeter taller. So this one sits deeper into the into the compressor alley. So what would happen if you put this on the HY35 is the compressor wheel is going to be hitting up against the housing and it's not going to turn. So don't buy this if you have an HY35 unless you plan on machining the compressor housing for an upgraded compressor wheel. This bearing housing right here is also machined for our 67 millimeter compressor wheel. So it's not necessarily for a stock compressor wheel, but you still could use it. But this dimension is machined out to 90.2, which is 1.2 millimeters bigger than the compressor wheel. The factory compressor wheel is 86 millimeter, so it's supposed to be 87.2 if you want to use the original HE351CW compressor wheel. <clears throat> so the V-band, if you don't know which V-band I'm talking about, it's the one that goes right here. It connects the bearing housing to the exhaust housing. There also is a V-band connection on the other side. This is a 4-inch. I don't have that V-band currently, but hopefully, maybe, if you guys need it, I can get it for you. But, I usually don't work on anything past the turbo, so. We also do have compressor housings. A lot of you guys have already figured this out that we had this, and I've been selling quite a few of these. This is a 67 millimeter compressor wheel and compressor housing, and we use this with our 67 millimeter compressor wheel. We sell this as a kit, so if you want to buy that compressor housing and wheel, you can also do that too. But if you do buy that housing and wheel, you need to get the turbine housing and turbine wheel at 67 millimeter, or else you're going to have a lot of issues because. You want to have, if you do any upgrade to HE351CW, you want to do the turbine upgrade because the turbine is just only 58 millimeter from factory. So we up, up that to 67 millimeter. And then if you want to up the compressor side, you can also do that to 67 millimeter. But I'm gonna do a separate video just on that compressor housing. Alright, thank you guys for watching, and if you need this rebuild kit, the links are in the description below.